Those are the bodies in the woods, you said, wishbone white and bin bag black, hanging between the attention of trees. The birch besoms sheltered them. The canny alders counselled them. Yews rooted through their pockets for coppers of soft nourishment. In the forest, the bodies play. Their manoeuvres slake, the trees replete. At the gatepost to Grimwood, there, at the fold in your map, are two ways to take. Neither is marked in your eye. Villain or Thane, the gibbet is two-faced, grinning at this road and that. Whose knuckle bones shall we throw? Whose head will roll? The Angelus rings at prime. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Obedient, he leaps from his mattress in the house of long nails, a meet and right spectacle for the ghost who skulks in the ceiling rows, parquetry, cornice or wainscot, who may or may not be prying, tuts when he hides his privates, keeping the greater silence. There is no vice like the flesh of youth, as yet unbent to the will of old men. This chapter is concerned with obedience. Pursuance is the father's task, whose meekness is immaculate. Let the inquirer incline to a stool, a rack, or settle four-quartered like so. When there is hesitancy, he should stand apart. Let someone else read from the lives of the oligarchs, the nighttime diaries of Nicodemus, or the recipes of Martha the Maid something to assuage the humours. But neither the apocryphal bead nor epistles to Arimathea, it is neither seemly nor right to read unreal things at such thin hours. Upon this earth the world tree stands, and this is the order of things. We leave this chapter on the steps of deference and speak now of kneeling. At the chapel of St. Sleep, all doubts are dispelled. By the endless Amen, 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 so be it discipline of mimesis. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, out of the depths, O Lord, hear my voice, let thine ears be attentive, and so on, and so forth, and so forth, so must it be. And then the ending of the lesson. The night is dull. In the forest they burn, those bodies they burn. Bone-legged Baba Yaga, crone of Erdebrana, she with the nose and the spinning wheel thumbs, has a taste for travellers and strays. Sometimes she is three, weaving hair on the hangman tree, playing apples and hearts on her knees, odours of entrail and augury. One question, that is all. Those were the terms. You knew before taking a place at the well. One question, and even that may be enough or too much. The pot is full, the moon is ripe, and none will hear. Think before you speak, think. There is no way back from knowing. What would you know, you who have slept soundly, and know not where you are, what would you dare? This chapter is concerned with chastity. Let it be read inscrutably, lest the tempter find you weak in the night. Watch with me, touch not the fires of desire, nor play the tinders of nature. Restrain your roots, for the skin is but leaf mould and mulch, marrow for toadstool and crow. When there are stirrings, you shall apply the blade occultly to obscure locations. 
the lanterns burn until prime, at which time you shall at once arise, unencumbered by the sorrows of a bedshirt or nightgown, and keep watch with the others in the oratory. Be regular in attendance at the reformatory, lest your sloth bear fruit in the dormitory. Acknowledge and disclose your manifold stains, the father of the hour shall absolve, he knows. Upon such earth the world tree stands, for this is the order of things. It is neither fitting nor decent to say more of this corpus. We empty this chapter in the unspeakable midden. Observe our ablutions. The confessional burns. A sly pyre, whimsy of lust and impotence, scion of spite, and see, the bodies mount indignantly. Here is a while to stand in line, this is an hour of agony. Time listens, time waits. Goose skin, thistle, and thorn sip from the cup that will not be took. Time listens, time waits. We trip three times around the stations of reparation. Time listens, time waits. Whose knuckle bones shall we throw? Whose head will roll? I buried a heart in some distant deep of clay and prayed for thunder to smother what remained. I went to the chapel that I might not live nor think, but sink in safe concealment from the terrors of existence. I cut down thoughts like wildflowers in the garden of love and kindly turned the implement on myself, lest a seed take root and effloresce. Beneath the subsoil a pulse still thuds, they fear the night that fear themselves. Somewhere a vein breaks, buds the rose. The confessional burns with a crackle of skin, with a cock crow of turns, with an armory of bones, and the ash, the ash of embered centuries. On Maundy Thursday, the Mount of Olives is occupied. After Compline, we abide in naked surveillance, waiting for the tapers to flame. The tabernacle gapes, empty as a vacant crook in the crooked universe, palpably barren. In the first Johanna, the doors are closed. In the second, your smock, your jeans and your socks your best polyester are quartered in folds on the fireside floor. In the third and fourth, the body is abandoned for a formless state. Behold the man. Torso racked in mannered ecstasy, the word made wood and veneer. Chest exposed, oaken eyes half closed in endless crest, this little death idolized in epidemic bliss, sating the misanthropist's fantasy. Could you not watch with me one hour, he says? We pay for it now. The tabernacle gapes, empty as a vacant crook in the crooked universe. The curtain raised, a one-night sight of the nil ex machina. It is time to bury the gods, you said, you, the piper, with your songs of desire, spooning beneath a tiger moon. The back way of May met the crossroad of June, and you brandished a rib and railed against the eagle-haunted Caucasus, took aim at the absence that burdens the world, and hurled a knot of clay, flaming, unmasked the night unburdened the day. There are two ways to take, you said, two roads to go, the garden of love and the chapel of stone, this way or that, in a fold in your map, for the soul is flesh and flashing synapse. 
This chapter is concerned with poverty. Here at the beginning and the end of Lent, we take time to reflect on what has been pleaded, on what has been taken and what has been seeded, the roses, beads and borrowed underclothes, the bodies fostered and the bones fisted, for we have no call for what we do not own. Where there is discord, the father of the house shall apportion duties according to custom and inclination, some as oblation, some as ordained, to ablate the tissues as are ritually stained, to service the chalice and things of the altar, polish the monstrance, position the psalter, one with vinegar sponge to scour the sconces, skirtings and architraves of the father's private chambers, another the bureau and classic ceramics, the porcelain baubles in library and attic. Upon such observance the world tree stands. This is the order of things. We leave this chapter on the altar of concordance and bite now our tongues. Crimson, the colour of Good Friday. Our Lord of the Secrets, the Ecclesiast, panting, dabs a napkin to his scruples, dons his vestments in the sacristy. Sometimes it is thorny to sit too long in one tonsured posture. We who have twisted and turned on bruised pews, pursued an ever postponed comfort like the rags in the woods that played, that raged, whom you remember no more. At the lighting of the candles, we see less what we are than we had imagined in shade. Old men bend the flesh of youth to the shape of ages. The tabernacle gapes, empty as a vacant crook in the crooked universe, palpably barren. In the fifth Jahana, there is only infinity. In the sixth, there is more of the same. The seventh window swings in the billows of nothingness, a glimpse of the twinkling zero. The eighth is a face in a familiar well, gaping back from where we began, the raw point of a pointless quest, riddle of roots and hair, whispers. What would you know, you who have slept soundly and know not where you are? What would you dare? Is this enough? Is this too much? You knew the terms. There is no way back. A heart still beats beneath the clay. God is dead, and yet the world has not ended, nor thunder sundered the veil in two. God is dead, and yet the morning aortas, capillaries sing fire and are not sated. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. I have borne no more. God is dead, the tabernacle empty. The woods have long been mute. At the chantry gate, the ecclesiast palpitates. An old man, older now, level with any other, mendicant or mischief-maker, shrinks at the dissolution of mystery. Cling to the comforts of caves, a sanctuary for demoniacs. God is dead. Observe the bell of bodies, forgotten, pine song singing in the wind of shells. Observe, here ends the book of spells. By morning, nothing more than an other world. Fluent rain names the faces that drink the dawn. The litany of night is silent. Lightning teases the lodestone strand. Stratus strokes the tongue. 
Word becomes root and roar, the heart that soars to atone its thirsting chords, and here is a beast adapted to yearning, illuminated with impulses universal, unquenchable, urging. The arc of the earth has shifted, imperceptibly the arc has shifted. The thunder that bows to none and all dissolves on stone, on leaf and lois, the fingers of the free and forgotten. Old ways fall to their place in time. There may be winters, and frost may wither the sound, but there shall always be thoughts of the unspeakable, and still the speaking unthought of. A new tree grows in the ashes of the old. Away, through the woods, is broken. <laughs>